Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're joining us on this special conversation that we're having with uh, Dr. Pawan Singh, uh, the MD and CEO of uh, PTC India Financial Services. Uh, welcome, Mr. Singh. I just wanted to first get through these uh, profit numbers as well as the revenue uh, numbers that have come in for uh, FI23. If you can just tell us what contributed uh, to your profit growth this year, sir. So, your profit, uh, basically our NII has been over 80 crores. So, that is the main thing why uh, the numbers are looking what they are. Uh, which is of course a historical trend, but uh, the provisioning numbers have come down. Hmm. And that is because of my credit cost cycle have uh, kind of come to an end. Okay. So, uh, because of this, uh, the, which used to be a drag on my uh, profit, that has uh, this time that has been addressed over not only this time but over uh, last uh, maybe a year or two we mm -hmm. have been working on that mm -hmm. so largely we have been able to take care of the credit cost and that impact has been felt so that is the reason okay. of uh, straight jump in the profit uh, from what we had to this time how do you achieve this uh, uh, this improvement on the asset quality front with your credit cost cycle changing yeah so this is an area where we had a lot of focus mm -hmm. and uh, in fact uh, if you look at my thermal assets, I have last five years we have been brought almost brought in from forty percent to now six percent, and uh, by end of this year we want to bring it to zero uh, kind of a thermal assets. So our stress came from the uh, primarily thermal thermal assets, and which we have been largely able to uh, uh, take out of our books. And we had all kind of models. Mm. I mean, we had NCLT, we went for some other scheme, we went for one time settlement. Uh, we also went for ARC. Okay. So, one size fit all, we didn't adopt. Right. Depending on the case to case asset basis, we tried all models. So, one of the few uh, infrastructure asset based companies who have tried everything on the stress mm. asset resolution. Mm. So, that was paid a very good uh, dividend. Okay. Not only the assets uh, quality improved, we were able to resolve, but the recovery rate was also very good. Okay. Is that why your outstanding book has come down maybe year on year? Up, uh, that is also significantly contributed apart from the prepayments which have happened. Mm -hmm. And of course, <clears throat> the uh, event which we went by also proved to be a little bit of a dampener, which, okay. you know, board not being there for a long period. Right. Now that our board is fully constituted, uh, we are back to sanctions. We mm -hmm. have a pipeline of over 6,000 crore of sanction this year. In FI24? 2024, we have. And what are you targeting in that uh, sanction uh, list? Uh, we uh, see, we are trying to be as green as possible. Hmm. So, as I said, that thermal is, uh, we have been able to reduce our book size. Right. So, we are trying to be part of the green energy transition, which exactly. is a national priority. So, we are focusing on, of course, conventionally we were doing solar and wind, we continue to do hmm. that, but we have moved to a discom uh, kind of model to third party PPA mm. kind of model. Mm. We have now moved to uh, e mobility. Uh, we have uh, also started doing uh, water sewage treatment plants. We have started doing smart cities. Right. So, all sustainability based uh, infrastructure projects. Road is, of course, now almost 12% of my book. Transmission lines also constitute a large portion of my book. Mm. So, these are the pipelines which uh, I have a decent pipeline going forward. Okay. This is going to be largely constituting my book forward also. Sure. Uh, on the uh, renewable front, is this largely named uh, promoters or, or are new age promoters also coming in uh, and, and looking for some kind of funding from you? See, the renewable space is moving very fast. Mm. So, uh, conventional promoters are there. The mergers acquisitions are also have been happening mm. very, very mm. fast. Mm. So, you have a name and tomorrow that is taken over by a new right. private equity or a larger uh, business group. That is one. Second is New players are, a lot of PE players are coming and operating in India. There are a lot of green funds who are looking for, uh, in fact, there's, India has a huge target. We have committed to be 500 gigawatt mm. kind of uh, by mm. 2030. Mm. Uh, so, that's a huge potential. So, a lot of new uh, European funds are coming in India and okay. they are uh, kind of entering into the space. Especially, I mentioned about the, uh, you know, open access and third party PPS. The counterpart is not being discop. Right. So that's a new model which has evolved quite well. And in fact, track record of these uh, uh, borrowers, mm -hmm. uh, these promoters has been very, very good. So what about the state government part of your portfolio? Is, is that still? Uh, the state government continues to be a reasonably good size of my portfolio because mm -hmm. initially we were hesitant to do uh, state, mm -hmm. but our experience with them has been not a single day default. Okay. And uh, quick disbursement, mm. uh, payments are in time, 
uh, good uh, interest margins right so it we, our experience with them has been very very good so we continue to be uh, bullish on the state government so you said about 6000 crore with the sanctions are uh, what is the loan growth looking like i mean over the, over the portfolio growth so normally like? we have close to about 2500 kind of uh, prepayment mm -hmm. which normally happens so i can say that we should be able to add anything from 35 to 4000 okay. crores in the current okay. year Okay. That is my Since you mentioned this, I'm just going to bring that uh, point in about the board. Uh, so, in December again, we saw uh, a few exits. Uh, and after that, uh, if you look at the disclosures made by the statutory auditors, they pointed out that SEBI sent out some letter to you uh, specifically uh, in this uh, earlier this month. I just want to get a sense of how soon do you think these problems are going to get resolved? Yeah, so, you know, the exit of previous IDs where they had to go because they were temporary, the second mm -hmm. round of IDs, mm -hmm. because they were there till December. No, but so, so, some have written a so, pretty so, prolonged letter. Well, you know, some, some yeah. wrote at the day when they had to go. Yeah. So, uh, the term was coming to an end mm -hmm. 15 days before they say that I resign. I don't know how much sense it makes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's behind us. We have our own board now. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very uh, competent board. We have... A very senior, hmm. uh, you know, ex secretary DB, sure. she's, uh, you know, uh, in charge of corporate governance in the government. I have ex chairman of a corporation bank, uh, it's MDC of corporation bank. Hmm. I have the director of finance of largest NBFC, chartered accountant, who's also the chairperson of audit committee. The important thing here is that we moved, you know, our accounts had gone into disclaimer. From disclaimer, it has moved to, you know, modified report. Hmm. And it's for the first time that we got. Uh, you know, uh, non-modified report. Right. So we are moving in the right direction. Right. Yes. Since the IDs have written to various regulatory bodies, we do get, uh, you know, inquiries from them. Sure. And we are over a period of time addressing it. Our own uh, calculation is that probably everything should now be on the table. Okay. We are addressing it one by one. Okay. We have addressed quite a bit and whatever is left, we will be addressing it. And uh, impact on financials, nothing of that nature. No, I mean, that you would have seen by right. the auditors coming down. Right. Fair enough, sir. Uh, one last point that I wanted to uh, get from you is in terms of the uh, financing requirements of India. Now, of course, uh, you know, we've seen COVID pass on and now sort of global slowdown setting in. There's a lot of focus on domestic uh, growth and consumption. Uh, uh, to your mind, uh, is the requirement for power and uh, for energy just going to consistently grow from here on uh, and therefore your role uh, as somebody who finances these things? Yeah, for several reasons it has to grow. grow. Um, and of course, we are not only power. We yes. said that we are yes. trying to be additionality and sustainability. Correct. So we are trying to, e-mobility has got a huge, it's, you know, already taking a hockey stick kind of a Which is why I said energy. Well, sure. so, yeah. so, you yeah. know, that that is an area which we are. Water is another area which mm -hmm. is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, sanitation, mm -hmm. waste management, waste to energy, biofuel. Mm -hmm. These are a lot of areas which are India has huge, huge. This just started. Yeah. Uh, as for the energy goes, I said uh, 500 gigawatt is what we are. You know, we are about 175 or so, but uh, mm -hmm. we are targeting about 2000. Huge ambitious target which uh, we have uh, in mind. So mm -hmm. there's a huge upside mm -hmm. which is available. And of course, power generally there is a demand because uh, last time we saw the spot prices going up. So this pressure will be there on the prices. So demand will be there. But I don't expect too many new, uh, you know, uh, thermal plants to come. Yeah. But it's we have to, you know, do innovations in renewable energy as to see how we can give uh, around the clock power. So innovations around uh, solar wind uh, combination, hybrid models mm -hmm. backed by storage. This is what is going to be the, you know, order of the day. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Singh, for joining yeah, us on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.